I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? To Matt once again, welcome back to another video. This is another paid request, this time from Derrett. Thank you so much for that. For people who want to send a request either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon, I will try to get to it as soon as I can. Both links are down below in the info box. And I apologize, I'm really sorry, Derrett, for taking a bit longer because it took me a while to find this film because I don't have Netflix, so I have to find other means to watch it. But I did eventually find it. And it's called I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore, which is a movie I had never even heard of. I'm like, what is this film? Well, it's an independent film starring someone named Melanie Linsky, who I'm not that familiar with. You also have Elijah Wood, who I am familiar with. He's most famous for the Lord of the Rings films, but I, I remember him more from stuff like The Good Son, the remake of Maniac, which was better than I thought it would be. Cooties, which is not everyone's cup of tea, but I enjoyed it for what it was. I think Elijah Wood is picking some very interesting projects, because I know he's a horror film fan, and or at least picking quirky characters. This one, it's a bit black comedy, a bit revenge vigilante, a bit of off kilter quirky humor. Is you have this nursing assistant played by Melanie, Melanie Linsky, and she pretty much her day to day life where things just go wrong. She's with a patient who says this racist stuff. Keep your monkey dick out of my good pussy. And then she dies, and then the patient's husband's like, Did she have any last words? So, of course, Melanie Linsky doesn't say anything. Because the, the, she, the patient was watching TV and protests. This is 2017. When this film came out. And then just annoying things keep happening. People almost hit her out in the parking lot. They go in front of her in the checkout lane. And then they have more than 15 items. Even though it's 15 items or less. People will drop stuff in the store. Won't pick it up. People have their dogs poo on her yard. Just sort of the uncaring world of selfishness that encapsulates many people in the real world and she's just getting tired of it. Until one day she comes home, she finds out her stuff's been stolen. Her laptop, her grandma's silverware, some meditation she had. And she's just getting fed up. You know, as she says, what hurts is the fucking violation. You know, they were inside my house. And there were moments that did make me chuckle. Like she's saying this is a fucking violation. And you realize she's talking to a little girl. That she's supposed to be reading a bedtime story to. Ultimately she wants help to try to find her stuff. Because the cops won't help. Even the cops are like. Well maybe you should have you know. Locked your door. Finally she gets help by. With this quirky neighbor. Play, played by Elijah Wood. And he I think is the best part of the film. Number one, I like him as an actor, like I said before. 
going back to see him in The Good Son with Macaulay Culkin. And what I mean by quirky, the way he acts, the way he's dressed, and he'll have a bunch of ninja weapons. Like he has a ninja star and he has this thing that's like a little mace. He doesn't go to town with it. It's not that kind of movie, but yeah, just more of the quirkiness. You know, interesting weird, if that makes sense. And this journey to find her stuff takes her and Elijah Wood on this little journey that gets a bit crazier and a bit bloodier than you would think. It leads into A to B to C. It leads to our lead character being kidnapped and have to be forced to rob this place. And then things go wrong with that. I'm not sure how much they give away to the spoil stuff. I would say at the end of the day, I thought it was okay. I didn't love the film. I didn't really like the film that much. But it, it was okay. If you take out the end credits, it's only an hour and 30 minutes. Elijah Wood was fun. Some of the blood gore little bits were surprising. Like someone gets their hand blown off with a shotgun. Our lead character gets her finger broken at one point. Uh, people get shot in the forehead. So it gets bloodier than you think. You know, it doesn't end on a stupid note or anything. The way it begins and the way it ends is not quite what you thought that trajectory of a journey would take place. As I say, Elijah Wood's behavior, he, he's having fun with the role. I think what it is, number one, I'm not sure about this lead lady, Melanie Linsky. I'm not really big on her, and I actually would have preferred a different actress. Because I know a lot of people loved her performance. She just didn't do anything for me. The, her mannerisms, the way she, her acting style is. She reminds me... What's that one girl? I forgot her name. She was Dave Bautista's cop partner in I Spy. Not I Spy, Spy. My Spy. What, what, what the fuck it was called? The, the Batista spy movie where he teams up with a kid. I remember not minding the film. I already forgot the title. I think it was called My Spy or something. Anyway, there was a woman who was his cop partner. And she's been in other stuff too. It reminded me of her. I'm not really a big fan of her acting style either. It took me a minute to go, is this the same person? Just the way, again, her acting style. I would have preferred someone else. Doesn't have to be known. Of an actress, but someone that I could be more drawn towards for the lead. Or fuck you, have Elijah Wood be the lead. Have Elijah Wood be the lead and just have him go through this stuff by himself. Have him have the same stuff happen to him that happens to Melanie Linsky's character, as well as having the weird you know, Japanese weapon thing, and he goes on this journey by himself, and you go through pretty much the same tra trajectory. You know what it is? This is a lesser version of the, of the Big Lebowski. In a way. It starts mundane, where someone goes in and took something from the lead character's home, teams up with someone who's a quirky, whether it be John Goodman or here Elijah Wood, goes on a journey just to find their stuff, and uh, granted, this one gets more violent. I wouldn't call it the Big Lebowski black comedy, I would just call it comedy. This one's a bit more darker in its humor. But it, to me, it just seemed like a less funny, less successful version of the Big Lebowski. Well, it was trying to be that weird, quirky style, but I thought the Coen Brothers did that better. And I yeah, maybe it's because the lead actress just, like I said, didn't draw me in. I didn't really give a whole lot of shit about the lead character. I care more about Elijah Wood's character. And, like, there's a point where... Her laptop that's been stolen, she has a little device. So when the laptop turns on, she can track it. Well, that works, and she calls the police, but she explains it so shit poorly, so badly, that the movie seems as if it wants us to think, oh, the cops are useless, let her do it herself. But again, she explains it so 
fucking poorly. No wonder the cops hunt up on her ass. She sounds like a fucking meth head. The way she's explaining the shit. Is that the hard to explain? Hey, a few days ago my stuff was stolen. Now my laptop has this device that if it's turned on, I could look for it on my phone. Well now I know where my stolen stuff is at now. What am I supposed to do? Can I go there and get it myself? Do I need to contact a cop? Like, because I have a device installed on there and now it's turned on, I can find its location. Do you, Can I go there myself or do I contact someone in your department? I just explained it more clearer than she did. And just stuff like that makes it infuriating. And maybe it's like her tone of voice or maybe just... She seemed like someone from SNL. And I would prefer someone... God, nah, I don't know. Now I'm thinking of a name. I mean, an unknown actress. I don't know who that is. This is unknown. But I'm thinking of other actresses. Even if it was... An older actress like a Gina Davis or a Halle Berry. If it was Sandra Bullock. If it was Selma Hayek. If it was... Demi Moore. Haven't seen Demi Moore in a while. That'd be pretty cool. But those are older actresses. What about a younger one? I don't know. I'm going to have to think about it. Maybe... I forgot her name. An Edge of Tomorrow. Can't believe I forgot her name. I just... yeah. I don't know what else to say about the lead actress. If you liked her, that's cool. It just wasn't for me or acting style. Derek Mears has a quick appearance. I wish he was in the film more, but he's in the film for like a minute or two. Selling someone a gun. Spoiler alert. Spoilers. When I talk about how it gets more violent... Uh, there's some nice surprising moments, I will admit, storyline-wise. Like, the story I don't think is bad. The script I don't think it's bad. I just think some of the, either the cinema, cinematography seemed a bit, meh. You know, there's nothing striking in his visuals, at least for me, or his photography, or his color scheme. But what I mean by surprises, going back to that, there's a point where they find the laptop, they didn't steal it, They it was fenced, bought it from somewhere else, and like when she's going to get that silverware from that place, and the old guy like breaks her finger, didn't see that coming, and then Elijah Wood smacks him. Or they go along, <clears throat> when they least to know they find this van, because they want to find the person who actually did it. Things don't work out well. Goes back home. She finds the one guy's stepson in her house. And immediately she belts him and fucked up his neck. <laughs> you think it was going to be a struggle, a fight? No. Immediately hit him in the neck to fuck him up immediately. To the point he's, spoilers, he stumbles out and he gets hit by a fucking bus. Again, that unexpectedness was refreshing to say the least. And then, oh, well, he was our third man. Not We need three people for this job. You're coming with us whether you like it or not. And then they go back to the place she went before. The stepson's dad lives there. And the mom. And that's where you get some violent stuff. Again, a hand gets blown off. Gray is edited a bit too quickly so you don't see the full gist of it. Which is too bad. But there's another one where someone fires a shotgun. I guess it fucked up because it blows up in her hands and blows her fucking own hands up. One of the thieves. Then, then the unexpectedness were kind of fun to see, and that's one of the things I don't mind about the film storyline-wise. And then Elijah Wood comes in because he's going to help out those a ninja star into someone's face. Doesn't kill him, just sticks in there. <coughs> And then the lead girl, you know, helps out. Uh, the the last bad guy gets bitten by a snake. 
because she's didn't there uh elijah wood they're trying to get out of there the guy's chasing after him and then the snake bites him and poisons him and he's crawling away the poison succumbing to that shit <clears throat> i would say if you like quirky independent black comedy movies that have a trajectory that's not as expected as you think when right? i just spoiled some but i did say spoilers if it Maybe you'll like the lead actress more than me. Like I said, at least I like Elijah Wood. If you take out the end credits, like I said before, it's only 90 minutes long, so it's not too long of a film. You can kind of understand the character's frame of mind with all the little things that mess around in your life. And as the lead character says, I'm just tired of people being assholes. <laughs> I can understand that very much so. So it's not that I dislike the character, it's just the actress, for me, was the wrong choice. And that kind of ruined the film for me. <clears throat> yeah, like I said, I don't think it was the way the character was written. For me, it was the way the character was performed. But apparently I'm alone in that, because the people who do enjoy it, they do enjoy his performance. I would have chosen someone else, and that's just me. But what can you do? The music, again, the music kind of reminds me of what they were doing, the Big Lebowski, where they have kind of off-kilter music and song choices. But it did make me just want to go rewatch the Big Lebowski, which is a better movie and better comedy and a more, much more funnier movie. Hey, I got a few chuckles out of here, but not anything more than a couple. So, again, not a bad film. But not a film I would ever see again. That's just my opinion. So, with that said, thanks once again for the request, Garrett. And we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.